chapter five, musical texture. The bold terms. We're gonna, is what we need to remember. Texture uh, describes the interleaving of melodic lines with harmony. And uh, it's important to know that melodic lines are often referred to as voices. So even though they would call it a single voice or, or the top voice, it could be instrumental, it could be re referring to a music line that's played by a trumpet or a violin, but not anything to do with the human voice. So don't let that confuse you. The term voice often refers to a musical line. So the simplest texture is monophony. Here it is. Phony mean or phone is sound like telephone, megaphone, cell phone. Uh, it has to do with, with sound. And monophony means a musical texture that has only one musical line. <laughs> There could be many instruments playing that one line and it could still be monophony. So it's not how many people are playing, it's how many musical lines there are. And so that's the definition of monophony. Polyphony is, again, the key word is poly, meaning many. So there are more than one melodic line taking place at the same time. Uh, piece I played this morning, right? I started like this line. It's polyphony. There's more than one musical line. And there could be many, three, four, dozens of musical lines, which would be a bit much, but there's uh, often two, three, or four musical lines. Homophony uh, deals with what we use, listen to all the time, where you have one melodic voice that is dominated and everything else there is to accompany it, all right? For instance, in this piece of music, let me play this. Um, again, you have, uh, you could have, you know, a singer accompanied by many performers, but our focus is on that singer and everything else is uh, there to support that singer. So uh, for instance, this has this melody, right? It's accompanied by this other, right? So that is homophony because uh, it has one melody, really, and the other part is there to accompany it.
So there's two types of uh, indications that the book can show truth. There's um, strict imitation and um, non-strict. Anyway, let's come back to the canon. The word canon is confusing. It's a musical term, and it refers to polyphony and uh, a certain type of polyphony that involves a lot of imitation where there's a, um, a musical line that's stated and then in one voice, and then other voices come in restating that same musical line and then it unfolds so that so it, that's what a canon and rounds are um, a type of a canon. Fugues are types of canons. Uh, let's see again. <clears throat> oh, the other term that we didn't talk about was was heterophony. Where is that? Polyphony doesn't have it here. It's over here, right? Heterophony, and this is when you have. Uh, the same musical line basically performed by different instruments, but or different voices, human voices, but they're not exactly the same. And this is common in jazz where you have a, a piano and a, and a trumpet playing the same musical line, but not exactly because you can do things on the trumpet that you can't do on the piano. So. Uh, it's not always going to be exactly the same. It's, same. It's, it's not strict. Same thing with, with uh, bluegrass music is like that, where you have a violinist playing and a guitar player, and, and they, they don't always play exactly the same. That's just called heterophony. Melody combined with ornamented versions of itself, right? Several musicians play the same musical line. Each varies some element, you know, the pitch or the rhythm. Anyway, that's what makes that style of music cool, jazz and, and, and uh, bluegrass. And the loss of non-Western music uses uh, heterophony, where people are singing and somebody will just not do the same thing as everybody else. So again, we have the terms polyphony, right? Two or more melodic lines. And it's based on counterpoint. We use the word counterpoint. Counterpoint implies that it's going to be polyphony. And literally, it means when you're writing, you write one musical line, maybe two or three notes, and you don't just finish it. You think, oh, how is the other line going to, what is it going to do while this line is, is, is taking place? And there's a lot, of, a lot of rules that apply in deciding what is appropriate for the other musical line. So you write one point and then you write a counterpoint. Point, counterpoint. And then that's that's why it's called counterpoint. When I was in graduate school, I had a class called 16th century counterpoint because it's different than 18th century counterpoint or modern counterpoint. And uh, and it sounds uniquely different, 16th century from the, from the Renaissance. And uh, the teacher wrote a book on how to write 16th century counterpoint. He just observed that how things were done at the time, and he made this set of rules. And this was not uncommon for uh, musicians, you know, during this time that of, of the 16th century, that they followed strict rules in writing music, and almost mathematical. Uh, allowing for a great deal of creativity, but nevertheless, uh, when I followed the, the, the rules of the textbook that the teacher wrote, uh, the, and you wrote music, point, counterpoint, do this, don't do that, you know, be careful of this, and uh, at the end, the results were amazingly sounded like 16th century music, so you would do it yourself and say, wow, by following those rules, I could write in that style of music. So again, um, homophony is a melody with harmonies. Traditional and popular, this is most of the music we listen to is like that. Homorhythmic, the same, right? Same rhythmic. All voices move, move in the same uh, rhythm. And 
uh, for instance, something like this would be start a uh, hum and groove, like where you have more than one voice, right? One, two, three. What's they play? They're all moving together. And a lot of choir, uh, church music is like that, right? People don't sing the same notes, but they sing the same words and they change at the same time. And so that is called homorhythmic, vertical, right? Everybody moves vertically together. And of course, when you write a composition, this is one of the tools that you have is to use textures to create variety in a composition. So it's not the same thing all the time. And this is why uh, composers write long pieces of music as opposed to Pop music is generally just generally two or three minutes long, and it's hard to um, do much other than state the basic framework of the piece of music, and there's no development that takes place. Examples of musical texture. And so even though I'm not going to play the music, we'll show you this is what you know monophonic music would look like. And this is what polyphonic music would look like, right? Two parts here. This is one, and you can always tell because see how these are connected, the bar line? And so this is now called a system, and it has this musical line and this musical line, and it continues. So they're written using counterpoint, and you can see this one is very busy, and this one is simple. Uh, homophonic music again, right? This is we we uh, said. And then it's just showing that there's a bass line, but but it's the melody with accompaniment. That's that's homophonic music. And again, homorhythmic. Everybody is in this case the soprano, alto, bass. They're all going ah, hallelujah. Alleluia, alleluia, all together, right? So that's homo-rhythmic. Uh, not to forget that we use texture is about cloth and uh, different types of uh, texture. And of course, it has threads like musical lines. And so how those threads interact create the texture of the cloth, whether it's a sweater or some kind of a weave or something real basic uh, or a design that's in the texture. So that's a great comparison is a visual, visual um, uh, of, of, uh, of cloth texture. Again, right, uh, imitation and a strict imitation. So uh, when I go back to this little minuet by Bach, and uh, remind us that we started with an imitation. Okay, now strict imitation would mean that if the first one skips down a fifth, then the imitation would also, also skip down a fifth. And it doesn't, right? So if it was strict, it would sound like this. start and then after they sing row 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 the bow double start and somebody else does the same thing in succession and it turns out to be in harmony then and this is what a canon is and so it looks like this visually right the first people start row row your boat and they are gently down the stream right the second group is over here and then they're on the third merrily 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 and then so this is what a canon is 
and we call it a round, but it's a cannon. And it's a four voice imitation. That's what it is. Okay, that's the end of chapter five.